The kingdom of Caria is the birthplace of glintstone sorceries. It is a land with a very rich history. It is older even than the age of the Erd Tree, and it existed before the rise of the Golden Order. In that time, Caria was known for the astrology practiced by the Lunar Queen and the Carian royal family. We know this from the telescope item description, which reads, Astrology tool used by the members of the Carian royal family, part of a larger instrument, removed and stolen away. During the age of the Erd Tree, Carian astrology withered on the vine. The fate once writ in the night skies had been fettered by the Golden Order. Astrology is the study of celestial bodies for the purpose of divining the future. In Elden Ring, it seems that astrology actually worked, and it was a source of power for the Carian royal family. They used this telescope to study the stars and the fate written in the night sky. But this all changed during the age of the Erd Tree. According to the Elden Ring website, the source of the Erd Tree is the Elden Ring, and the Elden Ring itself has been described in its first announcement trailer as that which commanded the stars. The Golden Order seems to be the order of the world, the rules that govern life and death, the logic of things. The Holy Water Pot reads, Holy Water causes significant damage to those who have lived beyond death and prevents them from rising again. The Golden Order has no mercy for those who trespass beyond life's bounds. The Golden Order then are the laws by which the world functions. These laws are supported by the Erd Tree and the Elden Ring, and they weren't always there. But once they were established, they shackled the fate written in the night sky, and made astrology useless. The Carian royal family could no longer use astrology as a source of power. And so astrology as a practice withered on the vine. This is emphasized by the fact that this telescope was part of a larger instrument, and it was removed and stolen. Most likely nobody noticed, because that larger instrument was no longer in use, being useless, during the age of the Erd Tree. One thing to note is that in the Elden Ring network test, there are no stars at night, you can't see any, and General Radon is titled Conqueror of the Stars. Now, before we saw General Radon, I thought the shackling of fate to mean literally turning all possibilities that were in the night sky into one possibility that would be beneficial to the Golden Order, as in shackling fate. But it could simply be that Radon and the Golden Order literally conquered the stars, as in removed them, because they're no longer there, definitely can see them. And even having gone through all the trailers, even in the places where it shows nighttime, you can't really see any stars. And the Carrion royal family can't practice astrology without stars. However, while this event, the Age of the Earth Tree, marked the end for the astrology practiced by the royal family, it did not end study of the stars. And this is because of Glintstone and the Rhea Lucaria Academy. Now, first of all, what is Glintstone? The answer is not as obvious as you might think. Contrary to popular belief, I don't think Glintstone comes from the sky. I don't think they're meteorites that fell to the Earth. Having gone through every single item description in the network test, there's nowhere where it explicitly says that Glintstones comes from the sky. At the very least, I don't think that they actually fall to the ground. The clearest description of what glintstone are comes from Sorceress Selen. This is what she has to say. Our art draws upon the powers embedded in glintstone. But what is the nature of such power? Glintstone is the amber of the cosmos. Golden amber contains the remnants of ancient life and houses its vitality while glintstone contains residual life, and thus, the vitality of the stars. It should not be forgotten that glintstone sorcery is the study of the stars and the life therein, a fact lost on most sorcerers these days. These lines are actually very interesting. She compares and contrasts glintstone to another material, which she calls the golden amber. She says the golden amber contains the remnants of ancient life, and it houses its vitality. Glintstone, on the other hand, contains residual life, and thus the vitality of the stars. She then reminds us that glintstone sorcery is the study of the life in the stars. The point she seems to be trying to emphasize 
is that glintstone is different than golden amber, and the life contained in glintstone is different than the life contained in golden amber. Unfortunately, she doesn't go into detail about the golden amber, but thankfully we do have another item description that does. The amber medallions read, The Erd Tree's old sap becomes amber, treasured as the most precious of jewels in the Age of Goffrey, the first Elden Lord. A primordial life energy resides inside. This perfectly matches the description that Selen gave us. Golden Amber is the sap of the Erd Tree. It seems to coalesce and contain ancient life. The reason that Selen mentions Golden Amber is as a means to explain what Glintstone is. She's explaining that Glintstone comes about by a similar process, except that it doesn't come from the Erd Tree. It isn't the same ancient life that makes up the Amber Medallions. Glintstone, according to Selen, comes from the stars. It contains life different than the life of the Golden Amber of the Earth Tree. It contains the life of the stars. And that's exactly why I don't think that it's actually falling from the sky. There are already items called meteorites. There wouldn't be a need to differentiate Glintstone if meteorites and Glintstone were the same thing. No, Glintstone is described as the Amber of the Stars and amber comes from a process. Now, it's possible that glintstone coalesces as a result of the life contained in meteorites that have already fallen, but glintstone itself does not fall. But regardless, Selene goes on to tell you that glintstone sorcery is the study of the stars. Through glintstone, it seems that Caria had rediscovered a way to study the stars. Not the Carrion royal family, or even Caria as a whole, Rather, this was an accomplishment of the Rhea Lucaria Academy. Rhea Lucaria is a sorcerer's academy for those who dedicate themselves to the study of glintstones. Rhea Lucaria went through an event called the Rhea Lucarian Resurgence. Now, as Celine said, to study glintstone is to study the stars. This Rhea Lucarian Resurgence is very likely the discovery that you could use glintstone to study the stars once more, study them even in a starless sky. This starry amber is also the source of sorceries, and seems to have brought Rhea Lucaria a great deal of power and prestige. Perhaps enough to go to their heads, as the Rhea Lucarian robe seems to suggest that these sorcerers were apt to forget their vows of virtue and austerity. Eventually, the Rhea Lucarian Academy drew the ire of the royal family. The reason why is not yet clear. It could be that the Rayan Lucarians were becoming corrupt, or it could be that the Lunar Queen and the Carrion royal family had become jealous of the Rayan Lucarian scholars. It was the royal family, after all, who first studied the stars. It's possible that they've grown jealous and believe that study of the stars should remain under their purview alone. Whatever the reason, the kingdom established the Order of Enchanted Knights, who served the Carrion royal family. The Enchanted Knights are described as Knights that have embraced the power of Glintstone. The fact that they had to embrace the power of Glintstone suggests that this is not something that the Carrion military was typically doing. In fact, the Carrion Glintstone Shield confirms that the Carrion Knights were originally established to counter the Academy. They were the royal family's means of competing with Rhea Lucaria. It's clear that there was a power struggle going on between the Carrion royal family and the Rhea Lucarian and Academy. We don't have enough information to know whether this was an open war, or if it was a cold war, where they simply interfered with each other's interests. What does seem certain is that the royal family ended up losing. The Carrion Knight armor reads, The Enchanted Knights, anointed by the Lunar Queen, were heroes of the highest honors, but fell into disarray with the decline of the royal family. This decline that is mentioned in the armor is almost certainly not due to the Golden Order's ascendancy. Since the Enchanted Knights were only formed to counter Rhea Lucaria, this must have happened after the Rhea Lucarian resurgence. Whatever the consequences of this power struggle between the Academy and the Royal Family, it's very clear that the Academy won, and the Royal Family and their forces were thrown into disarray. Elden Ring is turning out to be a wealth of interesting concepts and ideas. The Carrion Royal Family's use of astrology, the ascendancy of the Golden Order, the discovery of Glintstone, the Rhea and Lucarian resurgence, the establishment of the Enchanted Knights, 
the decline of the royal family, and what it all is going to mean in today's world, where the Elden Ring has been shattered and the Golden Order broken. The lore of Elden Ring is dense and interconnected, in a way that the lore of Dark Souls simply wasn't. I wasn't around as a content creator to talk about the lore of Dark Souls as it was happening in real time, and so I'm really excited to be able to do that for Elden Ring. I'm really happy that I get the opportunity to share with all of you my thoughts on the game. So look forward to that. Until then, thank you very much for watching.